Good afternoon everybody and welcome back to Tropical Plants at 53 degrees north of the equator. Um, it's a lovely sunny day today, very unusual for Wigan in the UK and uh, things are getting a little bit warmer in the greenhouse so I just want to turn you around and we can have a look. If we go down here towards the fan you can see we've got the fan on and <clears throat> we've got the temperature at 18.4 degrees and what I wanted to do today I said I would have a little bit of a deep dive into insulation so I'm just going to talk to you for a little while about it and I will explain what I've done and how it's working for me so far and hopefully somebody can come up with some better ideas or some something that they do perhaps that I don't do something I've not thought of uh, that would be great to hear from you so what I'll do I'm going to see if I can turn this around now and I'll point out what exactly uh, I'm doing okay so I'm going to leave these fans on I don't think they're too noisy so there's two fans on at the moment that one on that one I believe that um, our kids in particular don't like Stagnant, uh, we have stagnant, uh, still, uh, they don't they like to have uh, some kind of movement going on. Um, apparently, it prevents viruses, bacteria. I'm not sure how, but I suppose if you think about it in the wild, you know, in the natural habitat, they're always going to get some kind of a uh, movement. So, we've got the fans on, and uh, the sun's out, and everything's looking good. So, the temperatures I've already mentioned that in Wigan, in the, the 53 degree latitude, uh, or 53 degree parallel that Wigan lies on or sits on. Um, I've had a little look to see whether this is something that goes through any, you know, any kind of popular towns and cities, and surprisingly it doesn't go through that many cities that I've heard of anyway. Um, none of the big ones. The best I could find was that, well, pretty much the entire United States is below the 53 or 53rd parallel. Uh, just to give you an idea of what the temperature's like and what the climate's like. Uh, so all the zones that are here, the American YouTubers talking about, don't really fit. Um, the, the only one I could find that meant something to me was it, it, it uh, crosses a place called Edmonton in Canada. Um, which is I believe in Alberta and that, that sits on the 53rd parallel so maybe the temperature is similar or the climate is similar uh, but you've got to be careful with, with these kind of comparisons because um, for example New York which is much further south than where I am uh, I believe gets far worse winters than we do because over in the UK we get something called um, the and I can't think of it now that I have to say it on camera. Um, the Gulf Stream, and um, what this does effectively, it comes across from uh, the the south of the United States. So we're talking about the Caribbean and Florida area, and um, it's a, like a prevailing wind that that carries the air across. Uh, in a kind of swirling motion towards the UK and that warms us up. Now when I say warms us up you know we're not talking Caribbean temperatures here what it does is it, it makes us uh, just a few degrees warmer than, than we would get otherwise. For example um, I believe Warsaw in Poland also is on the 53rd parallel or close to it uh, which gets much much colder temperatures and certain parts of Russia, well, I suppose <laughs> Russia's so big, you know, it, it, the 53rd parallel does cross Russia, uh, areas in Russia, but so does probably pretty much every uh, parallel north of the equator, uh, but it goes through some very very cold areas. So where we are, where the UK sits, we are um, a little bit warm so that means that we don't get months and months of snow which you would normally expect for the 53rd parallel well, having said that it still is pretty cold the light um, at the, during the winter solstice the light goes down to 
uh, seven and a half hours, our days are only seven and a half hours long. And of course many orchids and tropical plants um, are used to, uh, I believe, about 11 hours of daylight. Uh, and same, roughly the same with the night, obviously it's going on up to 24. Um, whereas we get quite big swings, so in the, in the summertime we get light daylight hours of about 16 hours. Uh, so that's something that you know I can't I can't black out all my windows to, to equal that but I suppose maybe the orchids and the plants during summer get a little bit more uh, chance to, to produce food and energy for themselves than they do in the natural habitat um, but then that's tempered by the fact that during the winter months they're, they're really not getting enough um, so I've mentioned before I may have to supplement the light by about four hours at some point. I've not done it yet but as I mentioned in other videos this is my first winter in the tropical greenhouse and uh, it's going to be very interesting to see whether I can keep these plants going and help them to thrive. So anyway back to insulation. So I was going to talk about the insulation. So if I just lift the camera up, I'm sorry if, it, if the light's not very good. Uh, so you can see it's all bubble wrapped and it, it took me a long long time to bubble wrap this because you know I, there's only me to do it and I didn't really have the time to completely empty all the plants out, all the staging um, and start from scratch which really would have been the best thing to do uh, so I did it piecemeal and that's probably why it, it took me from August uh, right the way through to mid-October uh, there was already some bubble wrap on. I got bought the greenhouse in March of 2019, that's this year as I make this video. And you can just about see, if I close in on this, you can just see that there are the big bubbles and underneath that one I've got the smaller bubbled bubble wrap which, well frankly it was next to useless. Um, it really, really didn't do the job at all. And what I've done this time is I have gone over the top of that certainly along this side of the roof I didn't do it on that side um, it just wasn't it, it was falling off so I, I took that off um, I haven't done it on the walls either the walls have only got this thick bubbled um, I believe it's uh, triple layered I'm not quite sure what that means because when you look at it I can only see two layers but you know the uh, the sails um, steel did say that it was triple layered and it just seems to do a much much better job it's a lot easier to put up than the thin stuff um, you can't use the stuff that comes the bubble wrap that comes in packaging because it doesn't allow enough light through you know this is special horticultural bubble wrap um, I believe this is the, the bubble wrap that um, Monty Don gets on Gardener's World, BBC's Gardener's World, but I can't really verify that. Maybe that's again just to sell to spiel. I don't suppose he's going to sue them over it. So anyway, um, it's all bubble wrapped up and I read some information that said, and it's quite, you know, it, it's quite instinctive to know this anyway, that most of the heat in a greenhouse is lost through the roof. Now obviously when you're heating a greenhouse you want to try and keep your costs down. Um, and the best way to do that is not, you know, it's not necessarily heating it up, it's keeping the heat in. And what you want to try and do is keep as much of the heat in as you possibly can. Um, the bubble wrap is this time, because I've done, you know, I've had small greenhouses, eight, eight by six foot for years and years. I had one for 20 odd years um, and I bubble wrapped those two. I ended up bubble wrapping the outside of some of them. but just so I didn't have to empty all the plants out but it just it didn't it just wasn't as effective this seems to be at the moment much more effective because what I've tried to do and I'll just show you what I've used kind of swing you around over here um, I've got down here this uh, it's called Fixman tape it, it is waterproof tape you can use it outside and I also got this stuff. Now this is like double-sided tape for use inside. And that seems to have made a big difference because what I've been able to do, I'll just show you for example, um, what can we see? 
this here. So we've got a strip there, and then underneath there, I've put a layer of the double-sided. Actually, it's coming off a bit there, but it's not. It's not coming off where where the bubble wrap is down. That's just the end. It was the end piece. That's why that's up like that. But you've still got, and this is the key. You can't quite see it on camera. The key is between the bubble and the bubble wrap and the glass. You've got to have a layer of air because it's that layer of air, uh, that that trapped layer of air. That's key. It's got to be trapped. If you just stick bubble wrap up against glass and think that's going to do it, I'm sorry, it's not. You've got to trap that bubble, uh, that uh, layer of air between the pane and the bubble wrap. Yes, of course, you've got some uh, dirt that's already trapped, but if you can do that as well on the other side, then you've, you've almost doubled the effectiveness of it, in my humble opinion. Um, and it does, it does appear to be working for me this time. Uh, so getting back to the fact that the roof is, uh, you know, it lets more heat out, I've put extra on the roof. So you can see here, we've got a vent here, two vents, two big double vents. So I've also I've got bubble wrap on the actual windows themselves because there was a period of time between the autumn and winter, and the same in the spring, when I still wanted the vents to open, but it was cold at night. Um, as soon as we got too cold, and I knew it was going to drop below five degrees Celsius, I've disabled all these vents so that they won't open, and I've. Uh, put an extra layer then on top over the top of the vent so here you can see there's one underneath and then there's another one on top and then that's sealed all around the edges as well um, and that seems to be doing a good job for me there's an extra strip right along the top there um, again to try and keep that heat in the walls have only got one layer on for the most part um, it may be as winter goes on and I'm, you know, it, I'm thinking it's costing me too much I may go and put another layer on there but you know, looking at it um, it's one of those jobs that I'll probably keep put it, putting off the vents, sorry the louver vents at the side here these louvers windows, I've got four of those um, and they've also got like two extra strips of bubble wrap on them to, to prevent anything coming in um, it's interesting to note that the louvre windows also have a little tiny gaps between them, between each of each like separate window pane. So I've put some uh, some draft excluder, like a brushed draft excluder, on there to keep the heat out there. So you basically have got to go through every little bit of the greenhouse, go over it with a fine tooth comb, and <coughs> look for every crack, crevice, anywhere where the air can you know infiltrate from outside to try and prevent it from from losing any heat um, and that really should make it affordable I mean obviously it's a hobby it's going to cost something you, you just want to be able to uh, keep that as low as possible one tool I found really really useful for that is this little gadget over here I can mention this in the last video so this this is superb. This it doesn't didn't cost much. Twenty pounds, I think, off the top of my head. Might have been a bit more than that. And what it does, uh, you import how much it costs you for some electricity. In my case, it's, it's I've rounded it up, but it's roughly about fifteen pence a kilowatt hour. And then what that does is it's, it's attached to the heater. And every time the heater comes on, um, that then records the. Uh, the, the you know the amount of electricity used, the amount of time that it's actually on, that the heater's on, and it does calculate for me like a, um, an accumulating cost. So then what I do over here, um, please don't check all my figures because these have been done in a hurry before work, and some of these I've no doubt that I've miscalculated because I've done them all mentally. So what I've done here, just to give you an, an example. Um, I've started recording the temperature outside, what it was overnight, uh, then the date, the time that's displayed on there, it accumulates the, um, 
you know what like how many hours it's been on so say it's been on 15 hours after so many days then the following night it'll uh, the heat comes on it might be 16 hours and 17 hours the next night so I calculate the amount of time it's been on um, again it accumulates the cost so I calculate uh, that's the, the amount that's displayed and I calculate the cost at the end so you can probably see it's not really and this is through October down here uh, with a couple of one pound odds where it went down to three degrees um, but it's not costing me a great deal of money there but there is a, a bit of an anomaly over here there's like a, a three pound 47 I don't know what happened there um, but that, that again that there's a mistake somewhere there but the rest of these amounts again these were all frosty nights uh, one pound sixty eighty four there's a two pound fifty there but that was that was a zero degree night but I'm not that worried about that you know it might seem like a lot over 30 days but I'm not getting 30 days of frosty nights you know we might get I don't know in, in November we might get half a dozen frosty nights um, and there are there are there are advantages to the clear nights because you get the sunny days so it, it balances out in the end um, and I always say that it, it's it's equivalent to going having a cup of coffee every day you wouldn't think anything of going to Costa or Starbucks and having a cup of coffee which might cost you four or five pound uh, you'd spend that so for me this is it's worth it's worth the spend now if we go and have a really really freezing cold winter now which I'm kind of expecting this year seeing as I've started doing this um, then it, I might change my mind but we'll see at the moment I'm feeling okay about the, the cost of it so what have we said uh, the kind of bubble wrap this bubble wrap I got it the tri, tri layer um, bubble wrap I got it off eBay if anyone's interested I can link them to it and obviously I'm not I'm not affiliated with them in any way uh, especially with as we speak two subscribers I think one of them is me uh, but you know by all means have a look it's I found this worth it just by experience it's, it's better bubble wrap if anybody's found any better by all means let me know and I'll uh, I'll change it oh something I was going to mention I'm not intending removing this bubble wrap for as long as I can possibly do it there is absolutely no way I'm going through that again in springtime and removing it all it's got to stay um, and there's no reason for it to come off you, you would think okay like the Sun comes out middle of summer this is going to really keep really heat it up well it won't it, you know it's like double glazing in a house um, it doesn't make a house any any hotter in summer because you've got double glazing what that insulated layer does is it prevents the or it slows down anyway the heat exchange so um, in summer providing I've got you know the front the, the double doors open there I've got full vents massive vents open at the top here I've got four louvre windows at the bottom that will be fine to cool it down you know the only reason for me to remove the bubble wrap is if um, it gets really dirty and you get algae behind it and I feel like there's not enough light coming in um, I'm expecting that to happen over two years three years and then I guess I'll have to go through it all again and do it all again which isn't to be honest a task I particularly look forward to but on the plus side I can always do it piecemeal you know the bubble wraps all there I'm not starting from scratch and in a race against time to to get all the bubble wrap change before the uh, the frosts come it's done now and it can stay done for as long as I can get away for uh, away with it uh, other things to mention which are really important as well heat through the floor you can lose heat through your floor now what I, my greenhouse is um, this particular one is just simply sitting on soil that's it I wanted it sitting on soil because I wanted good drainage um, in the last greenhouse what I did um, and I, I really regretted it was I, I put a, a concrete base down and then I put a, a like a, a butyl liner a thick waterproof butyl liner on the floor and then covered it with flags and I really regretted that uh, there were some stones in between the flags they were really hard to walk on 
and water wouldn't drain through so it would just sit there um, between the flags and the stones and you know any bugs or anything you couldn't sweep you can't sweep stones so for this one um, there is a weed suppressing membrane underneath these what you can see now what you're looking at and then these are foam tiles and they are brilliant it's a nice soft surface to walk on it's easily swept um, it's porous so water goes through and will drain through the weed suppressing membrane onto the soil it just seems to be perfect it's not totally even but that's more to do with my lack of skills in trying to get a you know a, a soft soil surface and make it nice and flat um, i really wish i'd put some sand down but i didn't think of that until it was too late but it's okay it's fine see the, the fact that the floor is foam it kind of uh, bends itself to, to any any inconsistencies in the level that, that, that i didn't manage to achieve um, so yeah so that's the floor so that really does i think anyway i feel that that helps um, I'm in a cold, you know, a fairly cool climate here, so the fact that it's black probably also helps as well absorb a little bit of heat and give it back out again during the night time. Um, I was very careful as well to make sure, like down in the edges, um, where, where the floor meets, I don't know if you can see that there. Where, the, where the, the side of the greenhouse there, the, the metal greenhouse, the frame meets the tiles. Um, I was careful to put some silicon sealant all the way around so that I wasn't getting the bugs coming in, which I've seen fail miserably, but I don't think they're coming in from there anyway. I think they're in pots. So yeah, so that's, that's the insulation. What else is there to talk about? There's heaters to talk about, which I will do. I might do that on a separate one because I might lump that in with the controls. Uh, that I use so you know more or less what happens as soon as the temperature drops kind of talk a little bit about it now I guess so you've got that control there it's set to 15 at the moment as soon as it drops below 15 then it's set to put that heater on and I will at some point discuss heaters as well because I've got several I've got that one there which I don't use at the moment that one is much much cheaper than that one and um, really I don't know why I bothered I should have just kept the cheap one and used that I've got these strip heaters the excuse me pointy finger there so yeah so that's the insulation and at the moment it's an ongoing thing I'm monitoring it all the time I'm really trying to see if there are other ways that I can uh, you know get some heat in here you know I've seen people use candles um, bowls of hot water tanks of hot water um, and you know if I'm on it I tried the candle thing um, it just all it does is burn through candles I really don't think it creates enough heat to make a measurable difference inside the greenhouse um, somebody might prove me wrong maybe it works in a smaller one I don't know but it didn't work in mine uh, my six by eight foot one um, what else have I seen people do? The tanks of hot water again. I, I think it probably only really works if you've got a lot of them, a lot of tanks of hot water. Um, and I prefer to have plants rather than tanks. I have seen somebody do like run some piping underneath with you know the hot water for the house, which great that would be great. But gosh, what a what a an excavation that would be that absolutely no way I'm going to do that at this stage that should have been thought of earlier on but I didn't I wasn't aware of it earlier on and I probably wouldn't have had the money to do it anyway um, it's a shame nobody's come up with any kind of solar powered heating that would be that would be really good but I can't find anything on solar powered heating I think it's probably just not efficient enough at this stage uh, to give off you know enough heat certainly nowhere near two kilowatts um, so that was that so we're really left with the plastic um, but I think if you do a good job of it and you really you know take care and time and make sure you, you, you really do get a good seal around your bubble wrap and they're not just placed there and that there's no gaps underneath 
Um, that's something I do keep going around looking, you know, where, where they join. Uh, make sure that it's all taped up at the sides. Uh, uh, can't pass underneath, you know, it's it's stuck, stuck fast. And that's something you've got to keep looking at as well because as you, you can probably see, um, I do get quite a lot of condensation on here from the plants. Um, and the fact that I keep it humid as well, which isn't actually a problem in the UK at the moment. Humidity or lack of humidity is definitely not a problem at the moment. Uh, getting it to stop raining long enough to do anything outside is the problem. So that's it. I, can't, I don't think there's anything else I can tell you about the insulation. Um, I'm sure something will occur to me as soon as I turn the camera off. Uh, but if, if there is, I'll, I'll tag it on at some other point. So I'll, I'll welcome any comments. Uh, if anybody's got anything to add to that, I would love to hear from you, um, from, from all my two subscribers. <laughs> so anyway, you never know. So that's it. So, you know, if you like this and you want to carry on uh, following me on my journey here of uh, exploration, and learning then by all means like and subscribe to my channel and I will see you on the next one. Bye. Okay now didn't I say I'd forget something? I've not really mentioned this curtain. Now what we've got here, I don't know if you can see it, I'll just move some of them out so I can get outside. But this curtain, um, we use them in Places like uh, zoos, you know, where, where they're trying to keep uh, a place nice and warm, or you know, equally where they're trying to keep a place nice and cold. Um, one of the areas that you do lose a lot of heat are the doors. Um, now I've put the draft excluder all the way around, trying to try to cover up any holes. Uh, but this curtain is a real big help because it really does keep um, the temperature you know, a lot more even and prevents anything getting in. And of course in, in the summer months it's good to have to keep bugs from flying in, uh, but just let a little amount of um, you know, air exchange. So yeah, that's something that was, was quite an investment, I have to say. It was about, I think it was about 70, 76 pounds. Um, but it's something that'll last me as long as I've got the greenhouse. Um, and it's really easy just to move them. If you come in and out, I'm just, I'm just getting some uh, water. But you can just lift them up, lift these up and move them out of the way, which is what I've done. So yeah, that's something else that really helps with the insulation. So uh, if anybody's thinking of covering the door with something, um, I would definitely recommend that. Another, another eBay purchase. Okay, bye.